Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Courtney. Today is Christmas in July. I am so excited because Christmas DIY season is my most favorite season of the year. And today it's extra special because not only are you going to get some ideas from me, you're gonna get some ideas from four fabulous ladies. Let me tell you who all's in this collaboration. So first of all, there's Jennifer from Little Bit of Calm and Crazy. She does very cute, budget-friendly DIYs and I have to tell you her Dollar Tree hauls they crack me up she's a Texas girl like me so sweet please go check out her channel and follow her on Instagram there's also Yami from the Latina next door she does a great room makeovers and updates along with fabulous DIYs she also hosts a look for less challenge every month where she picks a co-host and then you can join in and get a lot of ideas for on the cheap there's also Whitney from Whiskey and Wit. She does, again, great Dollar Tree hauls. Oh, she's one to watch if you want some product recommendations that may not necessarily have to do with crafting. She does vet everything that she tries and she's got some great suggestions. And if you did not see her patriotic DIYs this year, it is worth going back and watching. They were on point this year. I even made a couple of them myself. And last but not least is Kristen from Kristen K. She also does Dollar Tree hauls, farmhouse type DIYs and she's another one to watch to get great product recommendations. All of them have Instagram accounts that they give kind of behind the scenes and bonus stuff so make sure you follow them there and if you are visiting from any of their channels please say hi down below and let me know that you're here so I can say hi back. If you like behind the scenes bonus DIYs and monthly challenges follow me on Facebook and Instagram because that is where you will find all of that and if you go visit their channels make sure to drop the cowboy emoji because I am from Texas or the pair of scissors so they know that you are visiting and can say hi to you guys. All right another of the chitter chatter without further ado let's get in to today's DIYs okay for this first project I'm going to be using two of these wall arts and one of the medium-sized houses I'm just gonna take off the little house here I picked this one just because I like those little houses and figured I could use them later on I'm gonna sand where they were attached just so that there's not a little bump there and then once those are pretty smooth I'm going to take some of my black Waverly ink chalk paint and I'm going to paint the entire frame and I'm gonna go ahead and paint a coat on the flowers I that's not necessary Necessary. Honestly, I really don't know why I did that, but um, I just went ahead and just did one coat and it covered just fine. I did want to quickly give you this FYI. So once you put this layer of Mod Podge down and you stick your paper on top, if you do not give it time to dry before you put the top layer, it will start to bubble the paper wheel a little bit. I, of course, had no patience and just kept going. So to avoid any bubbles in your paper, just do this part first, let it dry completely, and then go in and do your top coat. It, it's really not noticeable, honestly, if you just keep going, but I did want to mention that because you will deal with some bubbles if you do it my way. Okay, 
Okay, now we're ready to work on our house. I did want to show you this very quickly. I did go in and put a two coats of this ivory Waverly chalk paint um, on top of the design. And then I went in and just brushed a little bit of the cream uh, wax on top just to kind of give it a little bit of a distressed look. And then I let that dry really, really good. And now I'm ready to start working on my stencil. Okay, now I did end up for this, I wanted my little manger scene to be painted. So I did make a stencil on my Cricut, but again, you don't have to do this if you don't have a Cricut. You certainly could do the same process we did with the sheet of music, just print a scene out and then Mod Podge it into your box. Or you could trace um, if you wanted to a design in there. But like I said, I just wanted to go ahead and do a stencil because I had this in my library already. So basically all I'm gonna do is just get this stencil ready and I will apply it to the house and then I will go in with some Waverly chalk paint and paint black. Now normally I do use the little round sponge stencil brush but for this I wanted it I didn't want it to have a texture to it and I have found that when I use those round little sponge brushes it does kind of leave a little bumpy texture. So I took a very light and fluffy brush and I just lightly just brushed until the entire design was covered. Okay, so my last step here is to finish off the manger. So basically I just took some raffia and I cut it into little pieces and then I'm going to take some Mod Podge and put a thin coat on the top of the manger and stick some of this down and then I will go back in with my glue gun to fill in the rest of the roof. Now you could also put this inside your manger if you wanted to or you could use moss if you'd like or any of the reindeer grass. I mean there's a lot of options you could use for this but this is what I chose to use. All right, then I went ahead and busted out my little hair dryer that I showed you guys in my DIY diaries because I felt like I probably need to use it at some point in my channel. And basically I'm just getting off all the little glue strings. And then once that's done, this manger's finished. Now you could go in and add a little wooden star if you wanted to, to the top of the manger. I just chose not to because my scene has a star in it already. So that is why I chose not to. And then this project is finished. And here it is all finished and put together. Now you certainly could have these displayed separately, but together I think they look really nice. And I just took some white fairy lights and stuck it behind the manger scene. And when the lights are off, it's super, super pretty. Now let's get into the next DIY. Okay, so now I'm ready to start on this other version of this scene. So taking some of my Waverly white chalk paint, I am simply just going to paint the center of these. I liked the black and white um, plaid on this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the center. I'll end up putting three coats of white paint on them. And then I'm gonna be applying a stencil to it. Okay, now I made both of these stencils on my Cricut, but again, you don't have to have a Cricut to do this. You can just use regular stencils. You could, again, just make something on Microsoft Word, cut it and Mod Podge it on there. This is the pumpkin pie latte font from Defont. And so what I did is I just took some red vinyl and for one, I have ho, ho, ho. And then the other one says, Merry Christmas. Okay, now we're ready to transform our next house. So taking some of this Crimson Waverly Red chalk paint, 
I'm going to paint pretty much everything except for the roof. So the back, the front, the sides, um, and then the roof, I'm going to end up painting black. Now this is, I guess what you'd call the medium size house. The shorter, wider house is what I used for the manger. And then there's this one, and then there's the super tall skinny. So I hope that helps as far as which house I use. But once I'm done painting this, like I said, I will paint the roof black. Okay, so the house is painted. Now here, uh, I kind of massacred some popsicle sticks because originally the little windows I wanted to put on the side, I was gonna do these cute little wooden things and honestly, I just had to give up. So then I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna take this paint pen that I got from Hobby Lobby or Michaels, I can't remember which store, and I'm basically just gonna draw two little white windows on the side. Um, and once I draw them on there, there was a little bit of kind of cleanup needed. So I just go back in with a little bit of red paint. But this was just an easier option because, yeah, the popsicle sticks, not so much. Okay, so for the inside of this one, I knew I wanted kind of a vintage looking Santa and reindeer. This is from an old Christmas card. So basically I'm just taking my little cutout and then I am going to trim it um, so that it fits. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and go through with the Mod Podge again, putting one thin coat down, sticking the paper down, and then putting a coat of Mod Podge on top.
here with electrical tape, I'm taking one of these frames from Dollar Tree and I knew that I wanted my barn to have a tin roof. So I'm just going to, to break this frame down and then I am going to wear gloves. I'd highly recommend it because when you cut this, it does get sharp. I'm just gonna use regular scissors and just kind of eyeball measure it and cut this out. Now, if you can't find one of these frames or you're not really into this type of roof, then there are some alternatives you could do using the electrical tape. You could make um, rows of electrical tape that you just kind of fold over and then cut snips to make it look like shingles or you can just overlay pieces and just make slits that way and then you could stick that on top as well. Um, you could also do popsicle sticks if you kind of wanted to have a roof. Uh, I'm sorry, a wooden roof on top. So there's a lot of options if you don't want this tin roof, but I just thought it was really cute. and basically make the crossbars for the top and the bottom. You'll be able to just use one popsicle for this. It fits just barely, but then these will become your top and bottom. And then for the other two, I'm just going to leave them as is. I'm not gonna trim them because they will be covered up. my wood glue glue gun. I will try to link this down below. I'm simply just going to assemble this. So I'm doing the cross beam, making sure that both doors are going to match up. So this one goes first and I'm just going to put some pressure on it. Then I will do the other one and then I'll do the top cross and the bottom crossbar. Okay, and my last step is to take some of this brown cream wax and a soft brush and I'm literally just going to paint this door all willy-nilly. I'm not going to go a certain direction. I'm just going to go all over because I felt like it gave it kind of more of a aged wood look and a little more realistic. So I'm just going to do this one coat and nothing fancy, let it dry, and then I'll be ready to attach these doors to my barn. Okay, and to attach my doors, I'm just gonna be using my wood glue glue gun again. And I knew I kinda wanted them looking like they were open. So I'm just gonna do kind of a um, thick bead of glue right here on the edge, the kind of inside edge of the house. I'm gonna stick this on and then I'll do a um, strip of the wood glue kind of right here, as you can see. Um, stand by, there you go, right there. Um, and then that's it. That's all I'm using to attach these doors.
And just like that, this one is finished as well. I just love the multicolored lights. Again, I will link those down below if you want to pick up a six pack of those. The black and white signs I think would make great hostess gifts. I mean, seriously, this thing cost me next to nothing to make and I think it is a great Christmas DIY. Okay, so for this last project, you're gonna need one of these large candy canes from Dollar Tree. They have them every single year, so you will not have a problem finding it. They also have the small ones, and I'm basically showing you how to do this because I got a lot of questions about this that I showed you in that little multi-seasonal house decor. So basically the process is the same for the big candy cane and the small. So it doesn't matter which candy cane you get, whether it's the red and white striped or the green, red and striped. Okay, so you're gonna need some type of fabric. I got this fabric from Hobby Lobby and I'm cutting about almost, I guess, two inch, about one and a half inch um, strips of fabric. Again, it doesn't matter what kind of fabric. At the end, I'm gonna show you all the different versions of this candy cane um, that I have so far. But um, you just wanna cut a bunch of strips. I ended up using five strips of fabric and this fabric is just folded over. It's just the standard size fabric again from Hobby Lobby. Okay, the next step is to simply take one of your strips and we're gonna start wrapping our candy cane. Now, um, notice that I'm kind of putting it at an angle because this has a stripe in it. You're just gonna simply put some hot glue at the bottom and then you're going to attach the fabric at an angle and make sure that some of it is hanging off so that you can, as you can see there, <laughs> cover the bottom of the candy cane. Okay, once you've kind of folded over the bottom here and secured it, you're just gonna start wrapping your fabric. Now, I am wrapping at an angle, um, mostly because this does have a stripe, but all of my other candy canes that I have done, which again, I will show you at the end of this, are wrapped at an angle. I would just recommend it. I do feel like it just makes it look a little better in the end. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it. Now, depending on how bulky you want this, um, you could just wrap it with one, um, thing of fabric going up, if that makes sense. Just one layer, I should say, of fabric. But if you want it a little bulkier, you're gonna want to just continue to wrap it. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just wrapping this. Again, it takes about two and a half strips of fabric to wrap it all the way. And I'm just gonna wrap it twice. So that is why I needed five pieces of fabric. Now for this, um, I'm not really caring if it's kind of frayed or whatever, because my top layer is gonna have some extra fray to it. So I'm just going to keep wrapping this and then I'll start on my second layer of fabric. Okay, now I'm going to work on the top layer. This is my second layer of fabric and what I'm choosing to do is uh, fray one end of the fabric. Now I just like to pull the strings to fray it. You certainly could rip the fabric. I know a lot of people suggest that, but I just don't have success when I do that and I wanted a little more control. So I'm just going to fray it just a teeny bit and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap my candy cane again just like I did for the first layer of fabric. Okay, it has been wrapped with two layers of fabric. As you can see, it is still pretty skinny, but you can't really see the little grooves as much, which I kind of liked. So basically all I'm doing now is just taking a piece of twine and kind of wrapping it around and then tying it off. And then I'm just gonna make a little twine bow to attach to this. Um, I may not leave it on there, but you can add greenery. You could, there are so many options that you can do to this. Seriously, it's endless. So let me show you kind of the finished product of this one. And then I will show you my huge bucket of of candy canes and some of the possibilities that you too could recreate.
And here is the candy cane all finished. Now, again, you don't have to put the bow on it if you don't want to, but I loved how it turned out. For something a little different, you could add some fairy lights to it and just wrap it with a strand of fairy lights. Now, let me show you my huge bucket of candy canes. Please keep in mind, I literally just pulled this out of my holiday closet, so they're not arranged, but when I say the possibilities are endless, these are all the ones I have made to date. These make great hostess gifts. Um, just a very simple Christmas gift for someone. I really, really just love these candy canes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Please remember to go check out all the other wonderful ladies DIYs. And if you are from the channel, I would love for you to stick around. And hopefully these Christmas DIYs will tide you over until the official Christmas DIY season starts. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.